Welcome back to another mini Gen Con episode for Rover Crit Podcasts. Now, if you've been watching us, which you really should, I'm telling you, you should. Uh, we did an episode before we left. <laughs> before we left, we did an episode on our most anticipated games of Gen Con. And uh, one game almost made my list, <laughs> but I decided to put, take it off because I didn't really know much about it. It made my shambly non-list. Yeah, you, you're, you're lazy. I'm just going to bring a bunch of games without doing any work. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll take credit for that. Go ahead. So we have that game here, and I got to say, I was absolutely wrong. So <laughs> not to put it on your list. Yes, absolutely wrong not to put it on my list. So Will has played this. I have not. So yeah. I have here Abyss. Now, this cover may look weird because there are actually four different covers. And I chose this one because I really like the cover on this one. Uh, one of them actually sold out really early on. Was Do you know which one? Was it the it main the, one? No, it, no. actually there's plenty of the main one and the blue one. I'll explain what each cover actually is. Because um, this is what the main one looks like, though, if you're curious. <laughs> Pretty much, it's the game is victory points. And it, you get victory points either from uh, the people you hire or from defeating monsters in locations. Okay, and it's all it takes place under, under, underwater. All, yes, all under the sea. <laughs> like you're all you're different species, right? Yeah. There are five allies, I think that's what they call them. The exact wording. Okay. Um, <laughs> here uh, each one represents a color. There's the purple one. This is the one that's sold out. These are the jellyfish. They're the magic people, so they do more like tricky things. There's the crabs. This is the one they actually haven't have a box cover out yet for. They're red, so obviously they're very militaristic, so they're going to be the ones hurting everyone directly. Uh, the seahorses, they're the pretty ones. That's so, my choice. Yeah. They pretty much give a lot of victory points. They don't really have abilities, but their cards will be all, a lot, give you points to the end. The shellfish, they make pearls. So, you know, they're all about money. And they keep them, oh my God. Ah, yes, yes, yeah, so they help you get I didn't even money. have to make the pun. <laughs> yes, they did it for you. And finally, there's, an there's the octopus tribe, or allies, I shouldn't say, because I said five tribes described to him, and he confused them with the ga other game. <laughs> and, you know, they're, uh, you know, they got eight, eight tentacles, so they got their ha all their arms in all the different uh, pies, so they're the politicians of the groups. I love it already. <laughs> now, these cards are the tri pictures of the tribes. You pretty much uh, use these to hire the bigger lords. There's, each one has a number value. So like one through five, as you can guess, more ones than twos and threes and fours. But uh, you actually, when you pay for uh, something using these cards, you actually take the lowest value card and keep it with you. And the rest go in the discard pile. So as the game goes on, it's only the higher costing card. So it starts ramping up really fast. Okay. Yeah, which is a really great mechanic. Now, the lords I was talking about are these guys. These amazingly done artworks of each creature that have a different cost. To tell you like what color you need, and how many different colors you need. Like this guy needs to ha has to have red because he's a crab guy, but you need one other. You need to use w only one other. You have to use one other color for him, but you can't use more. You can only use two colors for him, or have to use two colors, I should say. And you need to get that number at the bottom, and those are the victory points. So, like if you notice, if I took out a seahorse, this crab's only worth four, but this one's worth twelve. So, so how do colors work exactly? Did you well, say that they, that each tribe is a color? Okay, all right. That's, so, you, and you need yeah. to, okay. Uh, first one to hit, buy seven of these lords ends the game. That's how the game ends. So, and there's actually also there's technically a sixth tribe. They're like the ancient ones Ooh. that you have to use one of every color to buy, Ooh. and they give you a free location. These locations are pretty much your money maker. They're where you're gonna get all your points. Resource production. Yes, like they'll be like. Uh, there's three different symbols. There's one that shows a little starfish. That means it gives you points depending on the ally, these small ally cards. If it's a trident, it gives you points depending on lords. And then I think there's uh, these give you, they are special if they have keys. They do something really special depending on the situation. But like if you get these three keys, which are on lords or through other ways, you get locations. And they'll give you more points depending on what you have. Um, the game is just worked really well. It was amazingly fun to play. It just slowly ramps up. Oh, and I should mention. Let's talk about these these components. Yeah, the you can also buy these things from other people, the cards, with pearls. Yes, and you hold them in little shell containers. It was the greatest thing around. But that's uh, so good. They look so good yeah, too. I actually got to play this game with uh, one of the co-designers. Right, I believe it was. 
<laughs> we're gonna find his name charles uh, yeah, uh charles, charles chevalier yes and he he, he apologized for uh, his broken english which wasn't really that broken i mean there's only one time i think he used the french word it was like when he said something for free he spoke better english than we do <laughs> yes so um i mean this game was actually i have to say this is probably my favorite game i've played and gotten at gen con so my my one that didn't make the list jumped up to one. Although to be fair, you haven't c played full games of some of them yet. So that you've sure. played a full game. But, I feel but like, still. I mean, and I also haven't played XCOM and Witcher like you did, which you are really excited about both of those. Mm. Definitely XCOM. But, you know, I definitely am really, I really want to play this with you. You don't know how bad I've been. No, it looks like just seeing it now in person, it's just a, such an inviting game because the artwork is so well done. And just the water theme, you just, I just want to go take a bath in this game. <laughs> oh, no, when I was playing this, literally the entire time, all I was in my head was just going, under the sea, under the sea. But yeah, uh, I didn't actually win this game, but I loved it even more. Actually, me and the creator tied at the, like, pretty much, or, or like one point, so I can't remember exactly. For last place, correct? Yes, for last place. The other guys just... Uh, crushed us. If you tie with the creator, I feel like that's better than winning. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best victory you can get. No, but um, yeah, it's if you can pick it up, I really suggest you do. All the covers are beautiful. The purple cover is the one to sell out, I think. I guess because it just looked really nice. Um, I mean, the blue one is, if you look at it, sort of scary. <laughs> and uh, I'm terrified. The green one was the other one they had, I believe, mm. if I recall. And they have look, but guys, but I went with the the seahorse cover. And I actually got signed by uh, Charles, as you see. Which here. is a nice perk. Yeah. yeah of I course, signing on the inside, because who would want to write on this? I don't know if they can hear you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, I, have, I just have to... Okay. Ivan, of course, made this my desktop background on my laptop without my knowing. <laughs> <laughs> that was... Yeah, no. You're welcome. <laughs> it was frightening. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I opened your laptop and then I saw that, too. I'm like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> um, I don't... Do you know the name of the guy who did the art? I don't know. We should, we'll find out, but... Uh, God, I know he mentioned it. And it's I'm not like, this guy on the side, is it? Uh, yeah, that is. Paintbrush. See, that little paintbrush. Xavier Colette. Um, I really hope to God they have him do more things. Because he did a fantastic job, yeah. Oh my God, this is some of the best artwork I've seen <laughs> in the game. So, if people have questions about the game or anything else at Gen Con, what can they do? Well, they can go to our email and uh, send us in a little email at uh, rollforcrit at gmail.com. Of course, you can also find us on Twitter at rollforcrit, where we've been tweeting a bunch of stuff, links to these videos about Gen Con and other news. And, of course, you can visit our site, RollForCrit.com, where we will hopefully be carrying a lot of these games we've been mentioning, as well as I, we post vi our videos directly, and we have news updates for other things outside of Gen Con. Absolutely, yes. Lots of things. Not so much this week, because we've been busy. Yeah. <laughs> but soon. But soon. Well, this is the news, really. This is the news, really. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>